Hi, I'm Stephen Gall, and in contrast to what we wore on the Mad Max movie, where actually we wore virtually no protective gear because that's the way they wanted it, when you adventure ride, you need to wear the correct gear. I'm about to take you through a full run of from top to bottom of all the, the good adventure riding gear, and more importantly, how to wear it. Starting at the top, of course, is a very, very important helmet. Not only should a helmet fit well, but also you need some necessary items. A motocross helmet really doesn't cut it out there on the road. You go at high speeds, the ventilation is not real good, the peak catches the wind, it doesn't give you as much variance as necessary. But a proper adventure helmet like this LS2 is very, very good as it has so many, apart from being very, very light, a really good fit, has the tinted visor that comes down with the lever on the side here that flips it out of the way, has the clear visor that comes down for all weather protection, and also a very, very highly vented peak, so that at higher speeds, 110, 120, the wind can go through and not drag your head back. As we have a variety of weather conditions when we adventure ride, from sometimes minus zero and raining up to 40 degrees in temperature, a bit like Toby Price is to put up with at Dakar actually, we need to be covered with all different aspects. Usually when we adventure ride, we also have a bag or panniers on the bike, so we can cover a few different areas by maybe a rain face guard that covers all the different areas. This can allow water not to go inside your clothing, but go outside your clothing, doesn't tip you full of water on the inside. Also, a buff is a great idea. This is my nice little camelback buff that I put underneath. You can tuck it around over your face to keep the wind, maybe the cold, keep you warmer, um, keep the sun off around your neck, which is really, really important around this area. You can wrap this in a lot of different ways and a buff is really, really good to have. Within the helmet, we've got eye protection. As I showed you before, the LS2 has different types of visors that come down, but some people may wouldn't need to use a goggle. You can see this goggle here has got a very good lens. There's a variety of lenses available. If it's not a goggle, then maybe it's a set of sunglasses, just simply a set of sunglasses inside the helmet, which will give you that protection as well, and also tint the outside, depending on the quality of helmet that you have. With our glove, our hand protection, you're having a range of gloves, and again, with an adventure bike, you've got a bag on the back typically, so you can have a bit of a range there. You've got a road style of glove, as we can see. You've got a motocross style of glove, and you've got a motocross style that's like a paw protector, a thermal paw. This is a Fox one. It's very, very thick and gives you warmth. Then you can do a lot of different things about layering your gloves as well, and also as far as chill on the hands, which is very, very important for their dexterity, the control of the clutch, the front brake, the throttle, is to put a hand guard on the front of the motorcycle to stop that wind blowing and that chill factor hitting your hands. So hand protection, not only for protection, but for warmth and climate control is really, really good. If you're new to adventure riding or motorcycling in general, these gloves, these underwear gloves, and Jeff Ballard store sells these, are fantastic to wear them against your skin. It really stops the wear point on your hand around here, and it is very, very nice to put those on. Also keeps your hands a little bit warmer, very, very thin, they go underneath your gloves really easily, but great as far as blister protection. Starting with protection that we wear underneath our clothing, we'll go up from the bottom up. Knee shin guard, very, very important as the minimal protection. Moving up to a knee brace. This is a semi-rigid knee brace, the Matrix uh, light brace that's semi-rigid. Up to the top of the range custom CDI brace that's very, very rigid and offers the ultimate protection in knee, knee bracing. With our elbows, it's very, very important to realize that elbow guards push out of the way. You might have an elbow guard or padding inside the jacket, but you hit the ground and those jackets aren't really, really tight in your arms. They push out of the way and you still hurt your arms or take skin off. So extra guards underneath are important, but extra guards that are too loose still push out of the way. That's why having something really tight like this, this one that I bought for my mountain biking as well as my adventure riding is really good. Then you go to more protection. And when you've got a complete Alpine Star body armor like this that's worn underneath, a lot of you are gonna go, that's way too much. But I tell you, when you hit the ground at high speed on an adventure bike with a lot of weight chasing you, you want as much protection as possible. So having everything hooked up and in one place keeps it in place. So you've got good back protection, you've got your, your, your body belt to keep things tucked in to keep your internals nice and tight. You've got good chest protection that zips up. This is the ultimate of protection. 
Alpine Star also re released a really lightweight uh, a Bionic Pro, Pro Armor, which is a bit lighter, very much lighter, still has arm protection, shoulder protection, chest protection, and of course the all important spinal protection built in, and some kidney protection around the side as well. So good, good under armor is important, right down to our pants. Another Alpine Star product is a set of pants, it's got coccyx protection, also down the outside of our, our uh, quadricep muscles, and a lot of the padding that you get, like these fox pants that are made for mountain biking and moto riding, not only has the chamois in them, which is very comfortable for long rides, but also has padding on the outside, which gives you a lot more comfort when you hit the ground. You need that padding. This type of pants comes in a lot of different ways. There may be just ones with chamois in it, like a cycling nick. This is meant to go underneath a mountain bike short. No padding on the side, but very, very comfortable around the crutch area. And, and then underneath all of this, then you've got temperature control. Do we run a material that wicks the moisture out from, out from the skin? A very light material that wicks the moisture? Or in cold weather, do we run something that's like a thermal? And this is our Alpine Star top. It has a, a very, very high top around the neck. Again, giving you warmth, it tucks in. There's a pant to it, of course, with all these things. And then you've got very good warmth. You can wear your knee braces straight over the top. And again, all of this has to be comfortable. You need to test it, put it on at home before you go out to ride, and make sure all your underwear is good before you put the suit on over the top of that. We talked about the underwear that we wear, the body armor that we wear underneath our clothing. So over the top of that, we might run a layer. It might be really cold. So maybe a moto jersey over the top of your body armor or underneath. Then over the top of all of that, we might have our, our adventure riding suit. This is the Alpine Star full-on suit, which is multi-layered, has zips to go over everything. You've got zips for ventilation to undo. It's Gore-Tex material on the outside, so it's waterproof. There's padding everywhere around the knees. On the hips, there's padding. Bib and brace to hold it up so it's nice and comfortable. Um, like I said, you've got zips and pockets everywhere to, to put things. You can zip the bottom part of the, the pant to the top part of the pant. And then the top part of the pant, of course, again, like most of the adventure riding gear, has all sorts of pockets, venting areas to undo, let the air flow through. You can double zip double zip the, um, the, the front zip so that air flows straight into onto your chest to keep you nice and cool. This has padding in the elbows, but like I said, you need to adjust the padding. Here's some more venting, but you need to adjust the padding so that you tighten it up in your arms so it doesn't move too much or put extra padding underneath like I suggested before. So having the good clothing over the top and then this Alpine Star jacket, not only is it Gore-Tex on the outside, there's a totally waterproof line that you can zip into the inside. These are the pants, of course, and you've got your, your jacket that is worn. This jacket's a really nice jacket. You can wear it socially anyway, but it's, uh, as you can see, they clip into the jacket. Really comfortable, very, very warm if you need it to be. Totally waterproof as well. And that's the kit you wear over the top of all that Under Armour. Okay, with the boots, there's a variety of boots that we can use. We can go for lower protection but totally waterproof something like this Alpine Star Toucan. We can go for a, a very very comfortable Alpine Star Tech 7 which is a super comfortable boot and that's the boot that I use most of the time when I venture ride. Or last year I rode out to Alice Springs to watch the uh, the Fink Desert Race and I wore these Tech 10s. So to have good protection on your feet is important. The adventure bikes are heavy. If they fall on your leg, you're gonna need ultimate protection. So again, it's a balance between comfort, temperature control, uh, waterproof, depending on where you're going, what you might be faced with. And un inside the boots, of course, we've got socks. Making sure if you've got any foot problems down there, you might want to wear an orthotic inside your boot to have your foot um, in a proper position. Then you've got full moto socks that the knee braces can be worn underneath and they fold over the top. This really nice thick fox one. Or you can run a cotton sock 
just, or, sorry, not a cot, a woolen sock underneath because the wool, you know, when you do a multi-day adventure ride, your gear starts to stink a little bit after a while and wool doesn't reflect the smell as much. So you can wash this by hand really simply. If you're wearing thermals or something else underneath your knee braces or knee protection, then a short sock is all you need. And, and that really covers your foot area. Comfort is very, very important when you're riding for so many days on end, sometimes seven or eight, maybe two, three weeks possibly on end. So having everything, everything really, really comfortable is very, very special. And the last thing we should consider is what we wear on our back. Okay, as far as riding long distance, of course, the most important bit is hydration. Having that tube to suck on all the time with the quality mixture inside, whether it's a water or whether it's electrolyte mixed with water, then that's really critical. But then something like the Camelback here has so many different compartments, spare tubes, uh, goggles, gloves, um, buffs, other protection, a spare jersey, thermals. You can fit so much in these many spots um, to put things, uh, a pump, tools, so many areas there to cover. Then you've got different styles of Camelbacks. This Camelback is my mountain bike camel Camelback that I use when I mountain bike. All the weights down low with the weight around your hips and uh, it's got little compartments on the side and again different variations if you're out for a long time then you need something with a lot more capacity if you're out for a shorter time less water less space for spares is also a consideration but certainly you should have something in your back with some fluid in it as a minimum okay well that really covered a full range of adventure riding protective gear but let's just overview all protective gear at the moment whether you have a moto, whether you're a trials rider, whether you're a trail rider, whether you're a supercross rider, an adventure rider, a road rider, it doesn't really matter. It's, to me, it's protection. And you might think you're not gonna fall, but you will. Everyone falls, everyone gets hurt. So it comes down to basically how much protection do you need? And really guys and girls, don't get caught up in the, I'm too tough to wear protection, I'm not gonna wear it because it doesn't look cool wear it because down the line when you get to my age and you get a little bit older and people a lot, lot older than me are out there doing it you want to still do it so if you're hurt and you're busted up and you can't do it because you didn't wear the right protection well you're the dummy aren't you so wear it